Greetings, I'm Epictetus, and this is Epic Tech. Specifically, this is a list of my top favorite five scripts. My top five favorite scripts. The ones that I think every single space engineer should know about. And probably use. But not necessarily all of them in one base. I personally have never used all five in one base, but I have used all five and I love them all. So let's get right down to it. I am going to just run through these fairly quickly. I'm not going to teach you how to install them. I'm not going to show you every single feature that would take forever. But if you'd like to see more in depth on any one of these, please feel free to put that in a comment. I have used these fairly extensively. I know most of them quite well. So, first, we have Taladin's Inventory Manager, a.k.a. Tim, made by none other than Taladin. Hey, those were supposed to be turned off. Shh, pretend those were off. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, no, I just, I just broke it. That's cool. That's cool. I'll show you that later. That's actually one of my, one of my favorite scripts. All right. <clears throat> so... Taladin's Inventory Manager is awesome for, as the name suggests, in managing your inventory. It will move things between refineries based on what's needed. Uh, no more having all of your ore stack up in a single refinery, even though you've got 10 of them. Taladin's will actually automatically move everything and split it out and all kinds of things. It'll also tell you what things you need based on a quota. You can see here that we are processing... Under the ref, that's refineries, I have four refineries. Ignore the one that says ice. It's talking about oxygen generators. But other than that, you can see I've got four numbers around there. It's currently processing one with cobalt, one, uh, two on platinum, and one on uranium. And it's moving around because as it produces more, it decides that, okay, we've got enough of that one. Now we're going to go and work on another one. So that's ore. This is the ingots we currently have. So it bases what it's processing based on how many ingots you have. Isn't that smart? I mean, why process more iron when you've got plenty? Etc. It also, ignore those, those are other scripts. Over here, it manages all of your components. So this is how many components it believes that I should have. And if I open this up, and I remove a whole bunch of, say, detector components, it will say, hey, you are short on detector components. So we're going to start making more. And it, if you have an assembler that is specifically assigned to detectors, it will turn that one on, and it will start producing more of those. And you can see it's very quickly running through those because I have mine fully upgraded. So we'll put all that back. Also, you'll notice I'm dumping this in the connector and it's automatically getting pulled elsewhere. That's because I have set up a cargo container with the word with um, in the name. It says Tim component. All components are automatically pulled into this large cargo container from anywhere except my welder cargo because it says P1 on it, meaning it has a priority one. I have told it I want 300 of all components except for, and there's a very long name after here, telling it exactly how many I want of some of the other things. And it will automatically fill that up every time I connect my, my welder ship. I also have told this cargo container I want all stone. Yeah. No, all ingots and 10,000 gravel. That's what that is. Um, which is currently not working properly. I'll look at that later. This holds all of my gravel and all of my stone above and beyond what that should be, but it's not. I don't know why that is. Might have something to do with me being in creative mode right now, because I'm not normally in creative mode. And then I have all of my ore that is not currently being processed sitting in this cargo container with very simple commands. Tim ore. That's all you got to say. There's a lot more complicated versions of this, but I'm not going to get into those because, like I said, these are quick introductions. 
The next one I've got, configurable automatic LCDs by M Master. You have probably seen this one before. This is probably the most popular script of all time in this game. And you can see here I've got two screens. One of them, if I open up and look at the uh, title, it says used text commands. And if I open up private text, I have told it that I want power time, echo, which means a blank line, then power and echo, and then inventory X T colon star ingot uranium, which literally means show me a list of all the uranium ingots that are only on this grid without showing me I can't remember. It's okay, because he's got a great list, uh, great documentation online. And you can see, this is what it's showing me. Ingot summary, this is how many ingots I have, this is how much ore I have waiting to become ingots. This is the amount of time that my current power will last. And this is all the various different power outputs and whatnots. This one right here is much simpler. It literally just says in the private title, this is where you define what you want it to say, damage. It's that simple. And it is showing that my small reactor, somewhere, is slightly damaged. And I've got three connectors that are also very, very slightly da damaged, just tiny mounts. You know, whenever you bump a connector that they do a little bit of damage. This is really handy to have around. You can run around with a welder, fix those up before they break. Anyway, there are probably a hundred plus commands in automatic LCDs, including things that will show you uh, what areas of your base are oxygenated, etc., etc., etc. The third one we have, Easy Automation, is actually what I'm using to create these buttons. So I have set up these buttons to trigger commands that are showing the various different screens and doing. Uh, all kinds of little things. This script allows you to basically program without programming. I, there's a little bit, but it's a lot simpler. And if I open up this screen, this is how it stores its information. You can see that I have all kinds of little tiny scripts in here. So this one right here, show prop. Um, I'll show you in a second. And this one is hide prop, which literally doesn't hide prop. It actually puts back what was there before. And if I hit this button right here, you can look at that screen. I've got it set to show the properties of this LCD and all the different things I can do with it. And you notice the font is smaller. That's because in that script, if I go look at this again, I changed the font size. You can also change the font color, whether or, no it show, whether or not it shows on HUD, uh, the background color. This is fantastic for little things like this, but also for controlling pistons and rotors and lights and all kinds of things. Uh, this one resets it back to the screen I want it to be. All right, our th fourth script is Phil's Easy Airlocks. I like this one because it's, well, as the uh, third one says, or the, the third one, the middle thing says, it's easy. So if I walk up to this door and I open it and step inside, it closes and opens up the next door and I step outside. Just as simple as that. Of course, I'm in creative mode and I have my helmet off. That's not good. If I open this again and decide, oh, I really want to run in here, I cannot open that door until the door behind me is closed, which means you're not going to depressurize your whole base. That's all there is to it. You have to name the doors properly, and it's all in the documentation. Once you name those doors properly, it finds pairs of doors, and I've got another one set over there, and you can set up the timing as well. You can give it a little bit more time to say, get up a set of stairs or whatever and it will work so there we go we'll just come down here and if for some reason you can't get through it's not a big deal just go ahead and open the door from the inside and yes it will open the door on the other side automatically afterward but it's not going to decompress your entire base 
The last but not least is the floor plan script by Elysius. Yes, this one is really fun. You've probably seen this one around. Maybe, maybe not. This one shows a floor plan, obviously. And there's a whole ton of different ways you can show this, show this floor plan. Currently, I'm in a base. This makes it fairly simple. It's going to look at a top-down view. We are currently in this area. We just walked out the airlock up into this area. But one of the best things about this is it can be configured to do things like show the current status of sensors so you can see occupancy throughout your base. Or you can have it show uh, air vents that are currently decompressed. You can also have it show damage. Now, this one can only detect things that are in the control panel that actually have a control panel. So screens, button panels, uh, vents, that sort of thing. But it cannot detect air, um, armor blocks or windows or that kind of thing because they aren't, um, they're not, aren't manageable by scripts. This floor plan script actually scans your base, looks at every single block, and then it figures out what should be there. Then it remembers that. And if something is no longer there, for example, this, it will actually show, in this case, not only will it show uh, the damaged block, but it also shows that those four air vents are leaking. And until I put that block back, that will show red. So I can find the block and put it back. And now it can't tell the status of that block. So it immediately thinks, oh, it's all fixed. But, oh, okay. Well, and in this case, I'm in creative mode. I forgot about that. Um, but if I were to grind this down halfway, it's not able to tell that it's halfway down because it's only looking for the existence of a block. All right. But also very handy script. Uh, that one would be especially handy in the case of, oh, see, the vents went away because they have repressurized. Uh, but in the case of battle or whatnot where you think you might be taking damage, I use it on mining ships sometimes so that if I bump into the walls and knock something off, it's going to tell me. <sighs> they also He also has a very good menu system that allows you to go in and configure things using a um, kind of an up, down, enter, and back um, like text-based menu system. It's very, quite nice, quite nice. But this is the basic, basic version. All I've done is created a single LCD panel called L panel. I did not type any of this in, but this is all the configuration that it automatically detected. Ooh, in order to install all of these, I'm like I said, I am not going to teach you how to install all these, but every one of these needs a timer. There are three different kinds of timers. One second timers, constant timers, is what, what I call it anyway, and in the case of easy automation, it actually triggers its own timer. So if it needs to do something uh, once a second or several times, it will actually trigger its own timer automatically. It's weird, but you don't have to worry about setting that one quite, you know, in any different way. So for the one second timer, you go into the setup actions and you put in, in this case, automatic LCDs and Tim both want to run once a second. And then because I sometimes throw in additional scripts, I always throw my timers at the end and I tell the block itself to start the, t the countdown. And since it's configured for one second, it will just wait one second and then trigger all of the LCDs again. This one, the constant timer, is it doesn't matter what it's set at because if we go, well, I mean, it's, it's good to have it set for one second. This one runs airlocks and the floor plan script because they want to run more often than one second. And they trigger now, which means they're not starting the timer. They're actually running again. As soon as they finish running the initial scripts, they run again. It also starts the timer. And this I discovered recently. What this does is make it so that if you reload the world, it will actually start up again. And you don't have to go manually start it. This last one, like I said, for easy automation... 
Um, I have it set to one second. It's not necessary. All it needs is a single action running the t um, actual programmable block. And it does its own management of this timer. Um, each one of these, in every case for a script, you need to... Um, you need to subscribe to the script. So look in the description of this video and you will find a link to my collection of these five scripts. Um, you can subscribe to the entire collection or to individual ones. Once you subscribe, hit edit. You put down a programmable block, hit edit, hit browse workshop, find the script. And in my case, I've got a whole bunch of other ones, but here's Taladin's inventory manager. Double click it. It'll enter all the code in here. Make sure you hit check code. If you don't hit check code, that will not work. Then hit remember and exit. Then go and set up your timers and it will continue to run. You can see that it says last run, you know, at this time. And I just restarted it. So it's only run nine times before it said probably some larger number. I didn't pay attention all of the scripts that work that way. In some cases, like easy automation, you have to modify the script. So you can see my I had to change the timer blocks name right there before I hit check code. Okay. Um, and uh, I think that's the only one that you actually have to change before compiling. The rest are configured in other ways, but each one of them has excellent documentation or I would not have concluded it in this list. I hope you have enjoyed this video. I hope it is useful. I hope that you can use these scripts to your own advantage. Um, I know that every one of these has come in extremely handy for me and I have much, much enjoyed them. There are a ton of other scripts out there. I highly recommend looking through uh, the workshop and finding other scripts and being kind to the script authors. They do a lot, a lot of work to get these things to run and to keep them maintained. Um, so, you know, be kind to your local scripter. Be kind to the guy that made this video by hitting that thumbs up if you liked it. Leave a comment. Um, if you think there's other absolutely you know, scripts that absolutely must be known by every space engineer, please put it in the comments. I will make a follow-up video if I get enough uh, suggestions with additional scripts. Plus, I'd like to know from my own. I, I use scripts all the time, and I would love to know about other amazing scripts. Um, this is not all the scripts that I know of. I, I use have used a lot of scripts. Um, and I like a lot of them, but these are my absolute favorites that I think everybody should know about. All right. Well, if you enjoyed this video, also check out the rest of my series. I'm doing a Let's Play, and um, I hope you enjoy it. And uh, until next time, I'll see you on Epic Tech.